Hi, my name is Dr. Samir Gupta and I'm an interventional cardiologist at Metro Hospital in Noida. And you know what I just did? I just sanitized my hands. This is good hand hygiene and this is very important to prevent the spread of COVID-19 or the coronavirus that you're hearing about right now. Now, I know all of you have probably been hearing a lot about coronavirus. Oh my God, people are dying. Uh, what is happening? So today, in the next few minutes, I hope to dispel some of the concerns that you have and maybe you will learn about some of the common things that you can do to try and prevent yourself from getting either the virus or even getting sick. Uh, so let's begin with the first question, which is what is coronavirus? What is all this hue and cry? Now, if you go and see coronavirus is nothing but a type of a corona is a type of virus. So COVID-19 is the is the virus which is actually causing the infection and it is a type of coronavirus. Now, coronavirus we've known for a long time and it is very similar to the swine flu or it is very similar to the SARS virus and other viruses which we have known about for a long time. Now, when these viruses infect us, right, like when you get the swine flu or when you get uh, the coronavirus infection, uh, you typically have symptoms of uh, some runny nose. You may think you have a little bit of a cold, maybe a little bit of a cough. And in extreme cases, you have some shortness of breath and you require hospitalization. Okay. So this is what the coronavirus is and this is what it's all about. Now, why is the coronavirus, why is this COVID-19, let me rephrase that, what is the COVID-19 is the virus, right? So why this COVID-19 is this human cry all about? Now, when you look at swine flu, the swine flu fatality rate is 0.1% or 0.01%. Uh, but in coronavirus, uh, the COVID-19 virus, the fatality rate is much higher. So it's about 2%. Now, when you look at SARS, which was there in 2003, and that was also a very big epidemic, uh, similar to COVID-19, that had a much higher fatality rate where people got much sicker, and a lot of uh, people who actually had the virus died. But compared to that, coronavirus is uh, much less lethal. It's not as bad as the SARS virus, but it tends to spread out more. That's why more people are getting infected with the virus. So the next question is, who are the people who are at risk of having bad infections with the COVID-19? Now, COVID-19 can affect the entire spectrum, right? It can affect children, adults, young adults also, and definitely the elderly. Now, we know that people who are above 60 years of age, if you have uh, chronic medical conditions like diabetes, you are immunocompromised, you have underlying lung infections, or you're on medicines uh, which uh, immunosuppress you, that means that they get the immunity of your body down, then these people are at a higher risk of having bad infections and requiring hospitalizations and also death. But if you're a young, healthy person, in general, uh, COVID-19 should not be as fatal or should not typically have a very severe infection in you. Next question after this is, uh, what can you do to prevent getting the COVID-19 virus. What you should do is use your common sense. And these are things not only for COVID-19, but we should employ in our everyday life, which is if somebody is sick in front of you, then you should be a little far away from them. You should tell them, please cover your face uh, when you sneeze or use your elbow when you sneeze. Wear a mask, tell them to wear a mask. And that is what you should typically do. Cover, don't touch your hands to your face because the COVID-19 typically spreads from respiratory droplets. What happens is when somebody sneezes, they sneeze the, the, the particles in the air. Those particles can either be inhaled by you or they go land somewhere or they land on your cloth or your hand. You touch it, you put it on your face, you breathe it, you have a risk of infection. That's how the virus spreads. Now, in everyday life also, you should typically not touch your hand to your face all the time, right? Or if you do, you should make sure you sanitize your hair, your hands properly, wash your hands with soap and water because that kills the virus. A lot of patients, my patients also ask me, Doc, should I wear a mask and go outside? That at current point of time, everybody does not have to wear a mask outside. If you're sick, definitely wear a mask. 
if you're immunocompromised, if you're, the, if you're one of the elderly people, then you should wear a mask and go outside. But otherwise, not everybody should wear a mask and go outside. Leave these masks. Uh, there's actually been a shortage of masks across the world. And uh, some of the, the, the medical associations have said that leave the masks for the doctors and for the nurses and for the people who are caring for these patients who have COVID-19 because there's a shortage, international shortage of masks. So I think we should all be good citizens and not hold on the masks and keep them and store them and we don't need it. How do you identify if you have a COVID-19 infection? So up till now, uh, COVID-19 was primarily in China, in some parts of Europe, in some parts of Southeast Asia. But recently we've seen that there have been many cases which have come into India. So contact was very important, right? Like how do you get the virus if somebody sneezes and we talked about that. So uh, a travel history was very important, but now in India, it is also starting to spread. So you have to be, con you always have to ask yourself, did, some, did I meet someone who probably had an infection or something of that sort? Uh, so that is one important component. The second component is you obviously the symptoms of uh, COVID-19, which could be um, the, the, the mild cough, the runny nose, the cold, um, just, just feeling like you have a little bit fever. So just it's very similar to the common cold or the flu as we know it. And if you are concerned, and which you may be concerned if you're watching this video also, then you should go to your doctor and tell them that please check me for COVID-19 or Corona and then they will make a determination if that is required or not. Now, how do you treat COVID-19? Now, the treatment, there is no specific antibiotic for it. Like if you have, uh, if you have a pneumonia, then you get antibiotics for it. If you have malaria, you get an antibiotic for it. But for COVID-19, we don't really have an antibiotic. Treatment is just supportive treatment. We give you, we are, you know, if you're short of breath, then you get oxygen, etc. And if you have fever, then you get uh, paracetamol and other medicines. So the treatment is very supportive for COVID-19. Uh, we, there is no uh, vaccine for COVID-19. It's a very new um, uh, virus. We've known about it only for uh, barely three months, uh, if that. So we don't have a vaccine for it yet, but hopefully in the next year, year and a half, we should have a vaccine for COVID-19 that will help prevent the spread of infection across the world. So in short, what I would say is uh, use your common sense. Uh, if you're sick, uh, go see your healthcare physician, see your doctor uh, in the neighborhood, talk to him about this condition. One very important advice I would like to tell all of you is only rely on scientific information available for the treatment and diagnosis of COVID-19. There's a lot of misinformation that is spreading. WhatsApp is full of uh, misinformation. So please be cognizant of what you, what you read, what you hear and what you believe. And some very uh, simple tips that you can use once again, uh, wash your hands with soap and water, uh, sanitize your hands with alcohol-based disinfectants which we commonly use in the hospital and which are available in your pharmacy. Uh, if, you are in, if you have an infection, then uh, stay away from um, other people as you may be infecting them. You know, a lot of people have asked me that what we should do for Holi, should we go out and celebrate Holi? And I think uh, festivals in general are more of a cultural thing and they should be celebrated inside your house first and also in the community. So do celebrate Holi, but don't go to large gatherings. I think this, uh, this has also been endorsed by the Prime Minister of our country, and I stand by what he says, that let's try and avoid big gatherings where people may be sick and um, may spread infection. So good hand hygiene, good public hygiene. This is a chance for us to reinforce this to our children and reinforce this to our society.